Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at calculating probabilities using the binomial distribution in the TI-83 or 84. Now, the uh, distribution functions are under the second uh, VARS menu. So VARS is going to be on the third row of your calculator screen. It's the second over from the right. And then the you'll see above it, it says D-I-S-T-R, that's for distributions. So to access that, press second, and then that bars key, and that will take you into the distribution menu. Now, inside the distribution menu, you're gonna see a list of distributions, and we're gonna use the binomial distribution in this case. So you'll have to scroll down quite a bit in order to find it. Uh, if you're using a very, very old version of the calculator, uh, you will not see all of these distributions, but the binomial one should still be in there. Now, um, the PDF portion stands for the probability density function. Uh, essentially, this is going to represent finding individual values for the binomial distribution. So if you want to know the probability of flipping 10 coins and getting four, exactly four heads, then this would be the one to use. Uh, the CDF is essentially based on the same distribution, but it is going to be a cumulative distribution. And so that will be for if you want to calculate a bunch of values, uh, not just four, but four or fewer. So we're going we're gonna to look at both of them, but we're going to start with the PDF case. Now, um, you're going to enter, the, the syntax here is going to be uh, N, the number of trials, P, the probability, and X, the number of successful trials separated by commas. Now, this is what the function is going to look like on the older calculators or if you are in classic mode. So if we are trying to calculate the probability with n equal to 20, so 20 trials, let's say 20 coin flips, uh, the probability of each trial has a success of 0.5, so again, like a coin flip. And we want to find the probability of getting, let's say, in this context, eight heads, maybe. We would enter... 20 comma 0.5 comma 8, and we would get a probability of about 0.12. Now, if you have the stats wizard turned on, then you're going to get a screen that looks like this. And you're going to there, notice the order is the same, but they're going to tell you what to put in to each of the things. So the trials is N, so that's 20. The probability for each one of success is 0.5, and then the X value is eight. So again, it follows the same syntax. And then again, you would press enter to obtain the value. And what you're gonna get is the same value that we had before. Now, the cumulative density function, as I mentioned, is for calculating probabilities up to and including X. And so in that case, you would use the same distribution menu you would scroll down to B and use the binomial CDF. Again, the syntax is exactly the same. So in this example, we're going to have five trials. We're going to have a probability of success of 0.6. And to find the probability of getting three successes or less, so that would mean three successes or two successes or one success or zero successes, all of them, and adding them up, then... We will enter the syntax like this, and it will calculate the probability. Essentially, it's going to calculate the probability individually and then add them up, and you won't have to do it individually yourself. So it will calculate that for you. You could separately calculate with the PDF all four of these probabilities separately, the probability for zero, the probability for one, the probability for two, and the probability for three. With the PDF, add them up, and you will get this exact same answer. With the stat wizard on, you will see the same thing that we saw up here, except it will say CDF, and you will specify 5.6 and 3, and it will calculate the same value. Now, the only difference is that it will tell you at the top of the screen 
that it's it's for the CDF and not the PDF. So you do have to keep that straight. Um, but the order of things that you enter is going to be the same in both cases. Now let's look at one last example. Only three out of four patients who have an artery bypass heart operation are known to survive five years without needing another bypass operation. Of seven patients who had such an operation, what is the probability that at least four will survive five years without needing another operation? So for the probability of success is 0.75. So, cause three out of four patients is three quarters, this 0.75. And we're testing seven patients, so that's N is seven, and we wanna know the probability that at least four will survive. So at least four is four, five, six, or seven. Now, um, if we want to calculate the probability, uh, one way to do that is we could calculate the individual probabilities with the PDF, the probability of four, the probability of five, the probability of six, and the probability of seven, but that's a, and then add them up. That is a lot of steps. And so an alternative way of doing that is figuring out, okay, what do I wanna leave out? And then calculating the cumulative probability of what I'm uh, not calculating. So essentially, if you wanna calculate the probability that X is bigger than four, the people that you're bigger, bigger than or equal to four, the people that you're leaving out are going to be the cases where you have three, two, zero, or one. So the cumulative probability up to and including three. So notice the difference between the endpoints there. That can make this a little tricky. But if we're going to use the CDF, then the complement of the people that are being left out would be equivalent to the solution that we're trying to find. So we would put in one minus, then we would go to our binomial, pull up the binomial CDF, and we would enter seven for our trials, 0.75 for our probability, and three for X. And then it will calculate the probability cumulatively up to three, and then we subtract from one to get the complement, and that'll give us our result. If it's easier to think about it in terms of calculating the PDFs for four, five, six, and seven, that's fine. You will get the same answer. A little bit more typing, but you'll still get the same answer. And again, the difference here uh, in this example, uh, same data, but we wanna know what is the probability that at most four will survive five years without needing another operation. And I just wanted to go through this to sort of emphasize the difference between at least and at most. At most means maximum of four and everybody up to and including four would be zero, one, two, three, and four. And so in this scenario, we do in fact want four or less. And so what we would put into the calculator would be 7.75 and four. Whereas in the other example, we were not only doing a complement, but we were stopping at three. So these problems with the CDF can be a little bit tricky, uh, but if you're not adding up too many numbers, like you're not adding up 15 values or something like that, you may want to consider just using the PDF and just calculating individual values. Again, it will take a little longer, um, but until you feel comfortable with the CDF, uh, that is an alternative way of, if it makes more sense to you, uh, possibly trying to get the correct answer uh, without confusing yourself. Uh, sometimes these things will sink in a little bit after you've had some practice with them. Um, you can try to calculate it both ways and make sure that you're getting the same answer until uh, it makes more sense.